captivity, it is necessary to correct the disobedient and to correct uh, the disobedient Israel uh, and to draw them back uh, from complete and permanent apostasy. Uh, they worship the idol. Uh, so God used a very extreme uh, ways to make the Israelites suffer and to completely uh, transform them. Uh, during the time of suffering, uh, they repent and they return and they've been transformed. So even though uh, it suffered a lot, but it also comes from the love of God, the last result, uh, last means. And in the book of Ezekiel, uh, there are a few key words. And they shall know that I am the Lord, have been used 63 times. Uh, they, shall be no, they shall know that I am the Lord. And most of the term used in the time when they suffer. Uh, so when they suffer, then they start to know that God is the Lord. God is in control. Yeah. Uh, similar, uh, very similar to us, right? Uh, when we've been blessed, everything goes smoothly. Uh, we seem to forget about God. But when we start to suffer, we know God is in control. Uh, God is the Lord. So we start to ponder how to return to God. Uh, just like uh, uh, the prodigal son, thinking about how to return to the Father. Oh. The second is the words of the Lord came oh, 50 times. So the so-called keyword means after they appear for so many times in the book of Ezekiel, then it becomes a, a pattern that God tried to convince some point uh, of God's will. It emphasizes on the particular term. Uh, the third is the glory of the Lord. Uh, the glory of the Lord appeared for 10 times. Uh, the first time in chapter 1, the glory of the Lord appeared uh, to uh, Ezekiel and before uh, God appointed him to serve him. Uh, and then on, the glory of the Lord they witnessed in the temple in Jerusalem and the glory of the Lord step by step, step by step uh, leaving the temple. Uh, they come out from the Holy of Holiness, then they move to the top of the roof and uh, move above the Jerusalem and eventually the glory of the Lord left. Once the glory of the Lord left and the foreign nation invade. So the reason the Israelites uh, live a very comfortable, peaceful life because the glory of the Lord abide with them, means God abide with them. Since God abide with them, so they were able to live a comfortable and peaceful life. Since the abidance of God left, and the protection of God left, that fence had been taken away, and then the foreign nation were invaded. The same thing, a lot of times, uh, we are very peaceful, right? Because God used a fence to protect us uh, without our, our awareness. And once that fence been removed, then we start to suffer. The same with the uh, Job. And the glory of the Lord will resume, come back to uh, the temple, the Jerusalem, the city. In the latter part of Ezekiel, the glory of God resume, come back to Jerusalem. And we know the latter part of Ezekiel actually is talking something spiritual. It's not something physical or material. And that's something spiritual usually we think is a prophecy of the true church. So the book of Ezekiel starts from the destruction of material temple and ended with the rebuild of a spiritual temple. Oh, it started from uh, the glory of the Lord disappeared from the material temple. It ended up with the glory of the Lord come back to the spiritual uh, Jerusalem, which is the true church. Oh, oh, so in the end time, the true church are going to, going to be very glorious. Uh, because God is going to abide in the church. So the glory of the church is not rely on the building. Of course, building the blessing of God. The uh, glory of the law is not rely on some kind of prominent uh, members uh, from the society. Of course, that's, uh, part, that's probably blessing of God. The glory of the law, key point, is the abidance of God. Uh, if there is abidance of God, uh, 
uh, and there is the glory of the Lord. If there is abundance of God, and the church will attract people, and the church can edify people. Why? Because God is there. But if the glory departs from the church, the church cannot attract nobody, right? Because God is not there. God is not there. How can you attract people? It's difficult to attract people. Oh. So to pursue the abundance of God, this is the goal of a personal spiritual pursuit. And to pursue the abundance of God in the church is also the goal of the church. If God abides in the church, the church is going to be very powerful. The church is going to be full of grace of God. The church is going to be a place. A lot of people, don't, when they come, they don't want to leave. When they leave, they want to come back. And that kind of church, uh, we can envision from study the book of uh, uh, Ezekiel. The glory of the Lord appeared ten times. Uh, first appeared to his worker and then called him. The second appeared to his temple. And because people's faith declined, so the glory disappeared. And the temple destruction. And then the temple rebuilt in spiritual way. And the glory of God come back. Uh, so there's a consequent, cons uh, sequence in, in the, uh, the book of Ezekiel. Uh, Ezekiel, if we read it, uh, the structure, uh, verse one, uh, chapter one to chapter thirty-two is condemnation, and chapter thirty-three to forty-eight is consolation. So always in the major prophet, we can see uh, the characteristic of God: uh, justice and mercy go hand by hand. Uh, always. God condemn them, apply justice, tell them what's wrong, tell them you have to change. After that, and then God cons consolate them now when they are in suffering, or when they return to God. Oh. So in the major prophet, we can see uh, two divine character of God oh. has been applied to the country of Israel. The same thing. The two divine characters will apply to every one of us. Uh, God loves us, surely, give us a lot of blessing. But also, God is a God of justice. If we have done something uh, not according to God's will, uh, then God will discipline us. The reason God disciplines us is not because God wants to destroy us. It is because God wants to refine us to become a better being so that we can remain being blessed forever. Now, in the book of Ezekiel, you can see four visions. Uh, vision means the Spirit of God come to Ezekiel and he saw vision. So vision means saw something spiritual. It's not uh, in a material sense or a physical sense, uh, in physical realm. Uh, inaugural vision means uh, before Ezekiel had uh, been appointed as a prophet, he saw the vision yesterday we already mentioned, uh, the glory of the Lord uh, and the calling and the instrument of the Lord. Uh, the second vision, he saw the corrupted temple. If we read uh, chapter 8 onwards, uh, the EDQ chapter 8 onwards uh, to chapter 11 uh, is the second vision. And the second vision, so-called so -called the corrupted temple. Uh, if you have gone through the book of Ezekiel, you can make it short. The so-called the corrupted temple means the temple is corrupted, right? Corruption there. And what in what way? Worshiping the idol in the temple. Oh. Oh. So corrupted in a way, they worshiping the idol in the temple. Temple are supposed to worship God, right? Uh, but the temple has the idol. So what does that mean? Uh, church is supposed to manifest the glory of God. But if we are not careful, uh, there will be an idol in the church. No. Look into the book of Acts, right? Uh, when God's miracle been manifest through the hand of Peter, uh, a person was paralyzed the whole life, 
And Peter called upon the person in the name of Jesus and was healed. And people start to look at Peter, right? Oh, this person is so powerful. Oh. And Peter said, don't look at me. You think the person can be cured because of my godliness, because I pray a lot? No. The person can be cured because the name of Jesus Christ. Oh. So quite often, we will attribute uh, the prosperity of the holy work in a particular worker is wrong. No. The reason the church can be prosper is because the name of Jesus. It's because the power of Jesus. Oh. And through his vessel means a worker. Oh. So it's not because the godliness, it's not because the prayer of the worker make the church grow. No. It is the name and the power of Jesus Christ. Oh. So from Peter, uh, we, we, we understand this. Oh. So any worker can make the church to grow. We thank God, right? But please don't idolize the person. It's nothing but an instrument. The, re the, the, the reason the church can grow is because the glory of God. God is the reason. The second uh, idol we can see in the book of Acts, right? Uh, Paul and Baraba, uh, they also perform a mighty miracle. And after that, what happened? The people thought God had come down from heaven among us, right? So they bring the oxen, try to offer to Paul and Barnabas. Uh, and what did Paul do? Oh. He turned down his clothes and jumped into them, said, don't do that. I am nothing but a human being, right? Oh. So in the church, if we hear the member mention particular person more than Jesus Christ, there's something wrong. Oh. Right? If we hear people mention a particular worker more than Jesus Christ, it's something wrong. Oh. Right. It is Jesus Christ who is the head, who owns the church. It's not any person who owns the church. It is Jesus Christ who make the church grow. It's not any particular person who makes the church grow. No. So we have to be very watchful, oh, very careful. Oh. Uh, the second vision, corrupted temple. And the, God tells them, you have to dig a wall in, into the wall, and you can see it. So what it means? Superficially, outwardly, you cannot see it. You have to dig inside the heart. Oh. Uh, superficially, everybody looks godly, right? Oh, but we have to dip inside the heart so we can see it. Oh, whether inside us there is an idol there. Oh. And then chapter 9, we talk about uh, God commanded the angel. Oh. What did they do? Make a mark in the forehead. Those who feel very sad about the corruption of uh, the Jerusalem make a head, right? make a mark. And those who never feel uh, uh, sad about that, they are identical. They agree with that kind of uh, culture. They, their forehead, no mark. And what happened next? The next is God sent the angel. For those who had forehead have a mark, just spell it. For those who forehead has no mark, kill it. So simple. So what does that mean? Nowadays, if we, if we see the culture is so corrupted, right? How can you change the culture? It's almost impossible. But if we cannot change the culture, at least we should not be conformed by it. In our heart, we feel very sad about the, the culture. It becomes so worried that it's so sinful. Oh. And God will make a mark. I can't know we are the person who are not uh, conformed by them. Uh, we already separate, uh, separate ourselves away from the culture, even though we live under this culture. Then we can be safe. But if we are conformed with it, we have no feeling about it, we are identical with it, and spiritually probably we already did, will be dead eventually. Uh, so this is a second vision, uh, the corrupted uh, temple. Uh, today's turn, idolized person. Uh, the church has the idol. Uh, and most often the idol is human being. And most often the idol is worker. And most often the worker idol is a worker who has achieved some kind of uh, work for the Lord Jesus Christ. Be very watchful. Uh, TJC uh, is not an ordinary church. 
The more we serve in the TGAC, more and more we are trembling. Why? Because God sits in the throne of this church. Oh, we have to be very careful. The third uh, vision uh, in the dry bone, chapter 37, uh, in the wilderness, he saw a pile of the, uh, dry bone. The dry bone has no life and no value. Right? Give you dry bone, do you want it? Oh, unless you're a medical student, right? Otherwise, you don't want it, right? Oh. But when the breath of God, so powerful, breathe on the dry bone, what happened? And the dry bone start to grow, oh, skin, and everything, and start to stand up and become a mighty army. So what does that mean? All right, dry bone. Original the Israelite like a dry bone, no life at all. Spiritually like totally dead. Uh, but when they are waiting to return to God, uh, God's spirit brought on them, and their spiritual transformation, and eventually will become a big army, just like every one of you, right? Before we believe in Jesus Christ, we are dry bone. Oh, or even after we be, receive the baptism, before we uh, really uh, waken up, we are like a sleepy dry bone, right? Living dead. Oh, after you per pursue spiritual power, uh, spiritual breath, breathe on me, uh, breathe on us, then we will be revived, become a mighty army. Oh. Then chapter 40 onwards to 48, a vision about New Jerusalem, and that New Jerusalem built in where? On top of the mountain. Top of the mountain. And we know that is not something physical. That is something spiritual. And there is a uh, rule for the temple of God. Chapter 43, uh, verse 12. Ezekiel chapter 43, verse 12. Chapter 43, verse 12. And this is the law of the temple. The whole area surrounding uh, the mountain top is most holy. Behold, this is the law of the temple. So, you are already finished, right? Eh? Let me ask you, what is the law of temple? Hey, Professor, what is the law of temple? One sentence. What is the law of temple? This is the law of temple. The whole area surrounding the mountain top is most holy. So what is the law of the temple? Yes, the, the, the principle is holy. Oh, holy should be the uh, principle of the temple. And that temple is the church. Because God is holy, so we have to be holy, right? So we come to the church, not only put on the white garment, right? The, the clothes should be clean, but our heart should be clean too, holy, so God can abide in us. So especially the chapel, right, is a place we worship God. So we, we, in order to uh, maintain a very reverent uh, atmosphere, uh, so we have to maintain the quietness in the chapel. And one thing, right, in the chapel, we don't drink. You look into the entrance of the chapel, no drink, no food in the chapel. Only two exceptions, medical reason. And if you are assigned to deliver a sermon, sometimes you are too thirsty, right? you can do it. Other than in the church, we have no drink. Can you imagine somebody bring water, somebody uh, bring a nutrition drink, and somebody bring a Starbucks coffee, somebody bring the uh, bubble tea, and somebody bring juice. Oh, and uh, during the sermon, everybody sip a little bit. What kind of uh, service it is? Oh, right. Oh. And if you just spill over to the pew, then the pew stand. Oh. So unless you have medical reason, oh, don't drink anything in the chapel. Oh. It's not that you cannot, even medical reason. Oh. So this should be our practice. When we are joking, something just go outside. Don't do it in the t chapel. Oh, because this is the place we pray. This is the place we worship God. Uh, and also, they, this will become a habit, right? 
If, if you don't drink the water of a period of time, then you will forget you need to drink the water. If you drink the water all the time, the next time before you come to the ch chapel, you just feel hey, something I forget, not Bible, the water. All oh, right, oh, you will become a habit. Oh. Oh, so the principle of the temple is holy. Think about it, holy. Oh. In the church, premises should be holy. Oh. So this is the uh, false uh, vision, New Jerusalem, oh, and that represents the true church, oh, and that will have the glory of God. Uh, okay, the next one. Uh, there are sim 12 symbolic acts. Uh, now we don't need to go, have no time to go one by one, but something uh, looks a little bit interesting, right? Chapter 4, verse 4 to 8. Uh, look, God wants Jeremiah, or uh, not, Ezekiel to lie down on side. How many days? On both, both sides, chapter 4, verse 4. Lie down on the left side for how many days? 390 days. Oh. Okay. Lie down on the left side for 390 days. Oh. Can you do it? Huh? Left side out, 300, 390 days. All the same, same side. Not even 300 days. One night, can you do it? You, you just die on the left side for whole night. Never change to the left side. On right side, it's difficult, right? How come? Because God used the symbolic act to teach the Israelites something. Oh. And also in the chapter 4, uh, verse 9, something a little bit interesting. Uh, Ezekiel. Chapter 4, verse 9. And take for yourself a wheat, barley, beans, uh, lentils, uh, millet, and the spelt. Put them into one vessel and make bread of them. This must be the most what? nutritious bread. Because God instructed them to make bread with this kind of ingredient. Uh, you, you go to Trader Joe, you can buy this bread. Oh, the ingredient is Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 9. At Trader Joe, you can go and buy it. Oh, so the Bible is very interesting. Huh? Oh, they teach you how to, oh, how to eat. And then in the 12 symbolic acts, oh, one of them is Ezekiel's wife will die and ask Ezekiel, uh, Oh. keep silent. Oh. That typify the Israel will be captured outside to into captivity. Oh. Oh. And there are five messages in the parable. Use the parable to convey the five messages. Oh, we don't have uh, time to go oh, oh, one by one. The useless vine, the unfaithful bride, and two eagle and a vine, and trap the lion, and two adulterous sister. So the Bible uses a very uh, what easy to understand a parable or example to let us understand the most profound truth. Oh. So one day if you are assigned to deliver a sermon, oh, the best way is oh, you use a very easy way to express a very profound truth, and that will be the most best way to deliver a sermon. Uh, so the book of Ezekiel, uh, roughly we go through in this way. There are many good teaching there. And then after the Ezekiel, we go into the book of Daniel. Uh, uh, Daniel can divide into two parts. The chapter 1 to chapter 6, we talk about the life of Daniel, how he was elevated to a prime minister. And chapter 7 to the last part of the book of Daniel, uh, chapter 12, is something related to prophecy about uh, what is going to happen in the end time. So chapter 7 to chapter 12 um, is very difficult to explain because that is related to the book of Revelation. Uh, when time is approaching to the end, 
God will reveal more God's will uh, to us so that we will understand better. Uh, and chapter 1 to chapter 6, uh, uh, we always talk about Daniel's spirituality. Uh, one of the important points of Daniel's spirituality is uh, he knows his own identity. Right? Even he lived in Paris. He knows who he was. He was a chosen people, uh, the prince of God. Uh, because he was aware of his identity, so he refused to compromise uh, anything which will conflict with his identity. Uh, so chapter 1, we know he did not want to partake the food uh, which had been offered to the idol. Uh, but even though, even so, he kept on moving towards, towards uh, the goal God wanted him to go, to become a prime minister. Uh, so, in the world, a lot of times we think about ourselves too much. If I don't do this, if I don't follow that person, probably I cannot get a job. If I don't do this, I don't do that, probably I will lose the job. Uh, so in order to survive in the society, uh, we live a compromised life. But if we look into the Daniel's life, he holds on his principle. Right? Daniel had been serving at these four, four kings as a prime minister. You know politics, right? In, the, in any country the same, uh, in the United States, right? Either you belong to red or you belong to the blue uh, politics. It's difficult for a person who serves a Republican president and serves at the same time with a Democratic president, right? But Daniel was able to serve four kings. Uh, and what is his political stance? If we go into the back, uh, book of Daniel, right? The political stance of Daniel is biblical stand, is spiritual stand. Uh, whatever against God is wrong. Uh, he just hold on his principle to a point he was thrown into the den of lion, right? But God protected him. He was not eaten up by the, by the lion. The second day, he was lifted, lifted up from the den of lion, and his position even more strengthened, more consolidated. Why? Because the king also fear God. See? Oh. So Daniel tells us uh, to live a life without compromise. Oh. So some of the members say, oh, if I don't drink, I cannot do the business, something. Oh. But in the church, we still see a lot of members never drink. Oh. But they still do, the, do, do a very pretty good, good of business. So the key point is whether God wants to bless us or not. If God wants to bless us, the opportunity of, of business keep on coming, right? And how can God bless us if we really find favor with God and God will bless us? Uh, so there are two ways to live our life. One way is by our own wisdom. We carry our own responsibility. Another way is by God's way, and God take care of everything. Uh, and what we can see from the book of Daniel, uh, about the few important teaching of this. And in the book of Daniel, one thing we can see is Daniel's spirituality. Daniel has an excellent spirit. Oh. Let's see uh, chapter 5, the book of Daniel, chapter 5. Uh, verse 11. And there is a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy God, in whom uh, is the spirit of the holy God, which means what? God abide with Daniel. And in the days of your father, uh, light and understanding and wisdom, uh, like the wisdom of God, were found in him. Because God abide in him, so the wisdom and understanding uh, found in him. Oh. So they, they described Daniel in this way. Oh, he was a very wise person. And also the same in the chapter, let me see, uh, chapter five. 
Uh, chapter, the beginning of chapter 5 talk about a king. Oh, what was the name of king? Verse 1. Besasa, right, the king. He was having a quest, uh, feast. All of a sudden, a finger was write, write, writing on the wall. Oh, if today you see the finger writing a wall without a person, how do you feel? It's very scary, right? Yeah. right? And then he was able to interpret the meaning of that writing. And that meaning means in the balance of God, you show wanting. Oh. So the life of the, the, the king uh, put on the balance of God and is had no carry no weight. Uh, so that evening the king was killed. So what does that mean? Uh, every one of us, we have to stand before God's balance. Uh, on the one side, put on the blessing we receive from God. On the other side, put on uh, the life we live. Uh, if the balance uh, show that our life has no weight then this life has no value at all. And how can we live a life with, in the eyes of God, our life with weight? In our side, we have to put God into our side. No, right? And live according to God's will. No. Oh, so that's the book of uh, Daniel. Then after the book of Daniel, we come uh, to my little prophet. And there are many uh, in the book of Minor Prophet. Hosea. Uh, are, Hosea talks about the covenantal love between uh, the Israelite and the God and the Israelite. Uh, and one of the way God tried to teach the Israelite, God asked the Prophet Hosea to marry whom? Ah, God asked Hosea to marry whom? A prostitute, right? Brother, do you want to do it? Marry a prostitute. Nobody wants to do it, right? Oh. Then how come God asked Hosea to marry a prostitute? That was a way to, <coughs> to show God's love. Even the Israelite was like a prostitute. You mean the prostitute means the unfaithful. Uh, Israel was very unfaithful to God. They not only worship God, they worship many idols. Uh, so it spiritually is uh, committing adultery, uh, unfaithful to God. But in the eyes of God, God still loved the Israel uh, because God had made covenant with them. Uh, so God asked Hosea to marry a prostitute with this purpose. Use his marriage as an example to show uh, how God loved the Israelite. Oh. What happened? <laughs> oh. Okay, now we look into chapter 2. Oh. Hosea chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 19. I will betroth you uh, to me forever. Forever, not, not short time, uh, forever. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice and in loving kindness and mercy. And this is a condition. Righteousness, justice, loving kindness, and mercy. And I will betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know the law. Uh, uh, so uh, God used all different kind of kindness to betroth uh, with the Israelite. I uh, try to treat them well and also ask them to be faithful. Uh, and then chapter 3. You look into chapter 3, verse 1 to verse uh, 3. 
And the Lord said to me, go again, love a woman who is loved by a lover and is committing adultery, uh, and just like the love of the Lord for the children of Israel who took, uh, look to the other gods and love a uh, ration uh, cake of the pagan. Oh. Uh, so that was a very painful experience to God because God loved Israel and Israel was unfaithful to him. God was very painful, but God still loved them and God want them to come back. Uh, so our relationship with God is just like a marriage. Uh, it's a covenantal love. God will never change his love. Uh, but the only one change is we ourselves, our attitude to God. Uh, uh, so chapter 4, uh, Hosea chapter 4, uh, verse 6. Chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also reject you from being priests for me, because you have forgotten the law of your God. My people are destroyed for lacking of knowledge. So nowadays, we live a spiritual life, Definitely, we need to pursue knowledge, to know God more, the knowledge of God. So our faith will be more rooted. Uh, especially in this generation, there are so many heresies. There are so many different kinds of ideas. There are so many different kinds of philosophy. Uh, there are so many different kinds of uh, cultural trends. If we don't have the knowledge of God's words, we will be very easy to uh, carry away by the worldly trend. We are very easy to uh, be trend changed in our thinking, in our mindset. Uh, so faith is important, but we, uh, knowledge is equally important. Without knowledge, we will be destroyed. Uh, so this is the book of Hosea. Talk about the love between husband and wife. It talk about the love between God and the Israelite. Uh, it's a covenantal love. Uh, God loves us forever. Uh, and Joel, uh, jo Joel is the prophecy of uh, the second coming of Jesus Christ, and also uh, is a prophecy of the pouring down of Holy Spirit. Uh, so, in the day of Pentecost, when they received the Holy Spirit, a lot of people questioning what happened. And then Peter quote this book uh, to tell them, whatever you have witnessed is a fulfilled, fulfillment of the prophecy in the book of Joel. Uh, so this is talk about the last days, what is going to happen, including uh, the pouring down of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and the book of Amos, uh, the book of Amos is talk about uh, in the day of prosperity, uh, what does God require of them? Uh, you can look into the Amos chapter 6. Uh, the Amos chapter 6. Amos chapter 6, uh, verse 1 uh, to verse 6. After you read this passage, then you can compare with the life we live now. Woe to you who are at ease in Zion. Look, do you want to have a comfortable life? Do you want to stay in the comfortable zone? Verse 1, what do you say? Woe to you who are at comfortable zone in Zion. All right. That's what the Bible says. Oh. And trust in the Mount of Samaria, a notable person in the chief nation. To whom the house of Israel comes. Oh. And verse 2. Go over to the. Uh, now we go jump to. Uh, verse 3. 
Woe to you who put off far off the day of doom, who cause the seed of violence to come near. Verse 4, who lie on the bed of ivory. Have you ever died on bed of ivory? The bed of ivory is very expensive, right? Very comfortable. And then stretch out on your coaches. In your home, do you have coach? Oh, straight out and relax, right? And then oh, uh, eat lamb from the flock. Nowadays, the best lamb, best uh, cow meat is come from Argentina, right? Uh, imported by the flight. Oh, and calves from the midst of the store. And verse 5 who sing idol to the song of the strange in instrument, what is mean? who sing the popular music, the idol song, oh, right? And have a lot of uh, musical instrument to entertain themselves. And to invest for yourself a musical instrument, a guitar oh, or whatsoever, right? Uh, like a David. And who drink the wine with a bowl, not a small cup, oh, a drink of wine with a bowl, whatever amount you want to drink, you can drink it, right? And the best, most ex expensive wine, but not uh, grief for the affliction of Joseph. What does that mean? The life is too comfortable, though. They never think about suffering. So how can they divide good or bad? Very simple. Nowadays, how do you divide good and bad? Very simple. Anything will make you comfortable is good. Anything will make you suffer is no good, right? Is that right? Nowadays? Yes. Good or bad, so simple. Make you suffer, no good. Make you enjoy, you good. The same with the time of Amos. And because of this lifestyle for a long time, they cannot suffer. Oh. Once they lose the ability of suffering, then their faith starts to drift away. Oh. So verse 7. Uh, therefore, they shall go, now go to captive as the first of the captives, and those who recline at the banquet shall be removed. Uh, so a comfortable life, if we are not watchful, eventually will cause the downfall of our spirituality, and then the negative consequence will be waiting down the road. Uh, so this is the book of uh, Amos. Even though we go very fast, still we cannot finish. Uh, chapter 8. After this first, then we conclude here. Uh, chapter 8, verse 11. Behold, the day of coming, said the Lord, that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor the thirst of water, but hearing the words of the law. So there will be a spiritual famine, not because they lack anything material, but because they have no God. So their heart cannot be fulfilled. So that was a reason there was a famine. Uh, verse 12, and they shall wander from sea to sea, from the north to the east, they shall run uh, to and forth, and seeking the world to the law, but shall not find it. Uh, okay, verse 13, in that day, the fair virgin uh, and the strong young man shall fend from thirst. Uh, so a lot of people will start to feel emptiness and start to running around looking for fulfillment. And eventually, uh, it will be captured by sinful desire. Uh, so uh, originally, we have another section in the Friday evening service, but because uh, the church want to have an evangelical service, so uh, we, we finish our in introduction of Old Testament in this point. Uh, if you have any question, you can uh, ask uh, um, any any moment. Uh, okay. So we do kneel down and pray for 10 minutes. Is that what our practice? Right, okay. Now we kneel down and pray for 10 minutes.